This is Tom Bernacki, and did you break your foot right here or your ankle? This is a very serious disease. I'm gonna tell you if it's broken, if it's just sprained, and when to go see a doctor. And then we're gonna go over the best tips to get it fixed as soon as possible. So stop worrying and start fixing this problem right now. So take a look at this foot. There is a lot of muscles on the top on the bottom, on the outside, there's ligaments, there's tendons. It's not just the bone that can be broken. This is where diagnosis becomes the most important thing. So how did you hurt your foot? Let us know, did you sprain it? Did you twist it? Did you fall on it? Did your little brother throw something at you? We wanna know how people are getting injured. So here's how you can tell if your foot or ankle injury is serious if you should go see a doctor specifically. So number one is if your foot is twisted and mangled and there's bone sticking out of your skin, it's clearly broken. Go to the emergency room, go see your podiatrist and get your foot checked out. It's clearly broken. You clearly have to do something about it. Number two, one of the easiest things is when you're running, when you're playing sports, you're jogging, you're doing your Zumba classes, even going up and down the stairs. If one day it's a little bit worse, the next day it's a little bit worse, third day, hey, it's really getting worse. Don't go into that position where you just stop working, where you stop playing sports. This is probably the number one thing we see is, especially with the young athletes and people who work jobs on their feet all day, they just stop doing the activities. It's almost the myth of growing out of it as a kid. If kids just keep getting foot pain, they stop playing the sports, they sit on the couch, they'd rather play video games instead. That is a myth. You're not growing out of it. You're just damaging your foot and doing less activity. That's a big myth. If this is happening to you, this is probably the number one reason you wanna see your foot doctor or foot specialist and get your foot evaluated. That's where we can help the most. These ones where you're just chronically weak and out of shape and your foot is hurting, especially if one month goes by or you're like month number three after a sprained foot or a sprained ankle, don't keep living like this. This is one where sometimes an X-ray or an MRI or an ultrasound can tell us exactly what this small little problem is and fix it. Number three is if there's redness, pain, and swelling. It's hard to use this 100% to tell, but kind of like point number two is there's a fine line. There's no specific, hey, you're broken, you definitely need a cast, unless it's definitely broken and dislocated and absolutely zero damage. It's usually something in between. You know, sometimes you could have a bone bruise, sometimes it's swollen and twisted, and a lot of the time, if it's really broken, you're more dislocated, it's more purple, it's more black and blue bruising, that's a definite break. But if it's just swollen or if it's really sore and achy and without swelling, it's probably more to that other end of the spectrum where you have a bone bruise, a ligament strain, and possibly as you're walking, you're aggravating it and it's not getting better. So number three is if there's redness, pain, and swelling that's not getting better or it's getting worse, get checked out. Look at all these nerves up here and down here, there's little arteries as well. So you have them in your ankle, so along the outside of your ankle and the top of your foot. These can become damaged as well. If there's too much swelling or pressure, you're gonna have that sharp shooting zapping pain, especially when you're sleeping at night. We always hear people that say, hey, it doesn't hurt when I'm walking, but at nighttime, it's such excruciating pain that I can barely sleep. That could be an injury to your nerves or your blood flow system get checked out. It's usually not, especially if you're a younger person, but it's hard to rule out. If you're an older person, this is more likely to happen, especially if you have diabetes, if you smoke, if you have other health problems. That's when it makes more sense to go see a podiatrist and get your foot checked out because these can be very correctable problems. Number five, this is an emergency. If your toe is blue and cold and you have no feeling in it, 100% of the time, go get that checked out. That is something you have to do immediately. Not much more to say about it than that. If you have a hard time standing, walking, 
if you don't walk normally, if you're limping with your foot turned out to the side, so if you're doing a lot of limping, that's a good sign that you have an injury. Um, a lot of the times this can get better, but sometimes it doesn't. You're, you're rolling the dice, you know, it's hard to say for sure. Another emergency is if there's red streaks going up your leg into your calf, if you're having calf pain, that could be a blood clot, but if it's red hot and swollen, you have an open wound that's getting worse, that could be an infection. Get that checked out as well. The most dangerous thing is an open wound where the bacteria gets into the bone. That's dangerous. So how do we diagnose this? The number one way to diagnose this is a physical exam. So simply talking, asking, and feeling everything. So checking down here, this is obviously toe fractures. Checking up here, these are first metatarsal, second metatarsal, third metatarsal, fourth metatarsal, and fifth metatarsal. Through the middle right here, these are called your tarsal bones. So right here, you have your three cuneiforms, so one, two, three, and then right here, you have your cuboid bone, right there, and right there, you have your navicular bone. These are common ones, especially when somebody drops something on top. So these bones are called your tarsal bones. These bones are called your metatarsals. This joint commonly is called your Lisfranc joint, and then you have your toes as well. Coming up here is, this is your ankle joint. This is your tibia, and this is your fibula right here. And sometimes if you fall and hit your heel, you could have a calcaneus fracture. So a lot of time this bone is like an egg. When you fall, it can crack, or at the very least you can bruise up the inside pretty easily. You wanna get an x-ray. A lot of the time, because it's hard to tell from no injury, to complete dislocated injury. Everything's usually in the middle. You need an x-ray to see if that bone's fully broken. What's the difference between a sprain and a break? A sprain usually gets better a little bit quicker and a break usually takes a little bit longer. A break's usually more purple and injured, kind of some of the signs we mentioned. And you want an x-ray. If we think it's a ligament, we can order an MRI or an ultrasound. I like to use ultrasound in the office, but an MRI, if covered by insurance, gives even more detail. If we think it's a break, but we have a hard time seeing the break, especially in the ankle, a CT scan is a great option. So how do you treat these injuries? Well, click on this link. We're gonna go over a top 25 guide. This is the massive list. This video would be too long if I included this list here, but click on that list to get your top 25. But I'm gonna go over the basics. If the bone is dislocated, so if something's like really bent like this, the rules are two millimeters of bone dislocation or 10 degrees of angulation or a crack through the joint. If you're cracked through the joint, any of these joints, so even the big toe joint, that may warrant surgery, especially the fifth metatarsal. That's a common one we see. I feel like even this week, I've seen like 15 of these. So those are common injuries that may need surgery. But a lot of the times you can get by wearing a cast or a boot. I do so many casts and so many boots compared to surgery that I find most people, if there's not deformity, if there's not broken skin, if nothing's dislocated, a boot and a cast will get it better. And most people, especially younger people, have no significant long-term problems if we then get you stretched out properly. So it's all about protection at the beginning. Then when you get out of the boot or cast, then you move into a brace. What's the timeline? I always tell people, on average, you probably need four to six weeks without much weight at all, then probably another few weeks in a boot, then probably six plus weeks in a brace. The more you're in the toe region, probably the less you need. The more you're in the middle of the foot, you're kind of medium. The more you're in the ankle, you probably need like a good three months to get completely better or more, depending on the amount and if you need surgery. So afterwards, you wanna get a great shoe. This is really the key. So a shoe that's stiff in the back, stiff in the bottom, and the toes don't bend. And we also want to get an orthotic. So I have a list down in the bottom for our favorite shoes. That should really help you out. But here's why you want an orthotic, especially with an ankle injury is, Watch this, without an orthotic, this is what happens to your foot. This is an anatomical foot model, but watch this. Look at how stable it is on the orthotic. This is me pushing down. It's not pushing down. Whereas right here, look at how it deforms. Your bones without support move around quite a bit, but with support, they're a lot more stable. So imagine if you're wearing a brace 
over the ankle, plus the orthotic, plus the shoes. Like, I mean, you're doing amazing. That's almost as supportive as a boot, especially if you can get these things in the boot. So shoes, braces, orthotics, everything's linked in the bottom. Uh, you know, these are things that should not be excruciatingly expensive. And then the biggest thing is you want to work out, you want to rehab. So the key is get some good stretching exercise and we're going to show you how to stretch, how to rehab, how to get your flexibility back. Everyone always wants to know exercise. So here it is a massage roller stick. This is $10 or less online. Check the show notes, but you have to massage out your calf muscle, your Achilles tendon, even your plantar fascia. Studies show that doing this for 30 to 60 seconds per muscle group gives you a few hours of relaxed and flexible muscles. So even for the plantar fascia, I love to massage the plantar fascia. The idea is you're squeezing the fluid out of the ligaments, the tendons in your foot, in your calf muscle. So the ball doesn't work great anywhere except the bottom of your foot. You want to use the massage roller stick I was using on your calf and your Achilles tendon. And you can use it on your thigh too. You want uh, loose thigh muscles, loose hamstring muscles, so there's less pressure on your calf muscle. But you could really focus time on your Achilles tendon, but you don't want to damage it. You don't want to hurt it. And look it, for a couple hours afterwards or a work shift afterwards, you can then stretch. So now I'm gently stretching my Achilles tendonitis. You never, and I repeat, never want to cause pain. If something is torn, if something is partially torn, or if you have crippling pain while stretching, stop. That means you have to heal, you might have an injury, and you have to get that checked out with your podiatrist or foot care specialist because you could be spreading and tearing further. But look at before that massage and gentle stretch, I couldn't even touch my toes. But now look at way past my toes. You know, if I really keep doing this, sometimes I can make it all the way up to my elbow. Whereas in the morning when I get up, I can't even touch my toes. That's insane. So that's how much the massage and the stretching combo does. If that helped, check out our flat foot treatment and other recommended guys. Subscribe, ask the questions, comment below. We love your opinion. Tell us how you hurt your foot.